Kitty. And I'm Jennifer. And we're the O'Neill sisters. And we're going to show you how to make this floating bead necklace. This necklace has two wires that go in and out of the beads, and we're going to show you how to do that. Then we're going to show you how to finish the ends and put on the clasp. It's easier than you think. Here are the tools and materials you need to make the floating bead necklace. You need a pair of chain nose pliers, and you need an extra set of pliers. We're going to use our round nose pliers and you need a pair of wire cutters or flush cutters. And we're gonna build the necklace on bead stringing wire. And this bead stringing wire that we chose is 19 strand, which is middle flexibility. And we chose a satin silver color. To measure our bead stringing wire, we're going to use a tape measure. And we also have masking tape, and we'll show you what that's for when we get to it. To finish the ends, we have two clamshell bead tips, and these are available at your local craft store or bead store. We have crimp beads, and we've chosen a tiny size, two millimeters, and you only need two of those. We have bead stringing glue, and that's to secure the ends. And finally, we have a lobster clasp and two jump rings. And now for the beads. For beads, we've chosen a large faceted glass rondel bead, and rondels have a measurement that's two numbers. There's a width measurement, and then a diameter measurement. And these particular large rondels are five millimeters by 12 millimeters. We have another rondel that's smaller, and these are four millimeters by six millimeters. And then we have these very pretty brushed silver balls that are three millimeters in size. So you're gonna need nine of the biggest bead, 10 of the medium sized bead, and 20 of the tiny bead. The first thing we need to do is lay out our beads onto our bead board, and we're going to start with our largest beads. We're just going to space them evenly around the necklace, and we're not alternating the colors exactly. We're kind of mixing it up a little bit. It makes it more interesting. And next we're going to put the medium-sized beads in between each of the large beads and one at each end. And these green beads that we chose have an AB finish or Aurora Borealis finish. And that was created by Swarovski back in the day. And it gives the beads sort of a shiny finish or a little bit of an iridescence. It's kind of that uh, rainbow oil, like, like when you look at the surface of oil and you get the rainbow finish. It's pretty. Next, we're going to put in our tiny um, silver balls. And we're going to put one of those at, at the end and then put one in between each of the other beads. We're going to do that all the way around. And that's why you need so many of the little beads because they go in between all the beads. And we chose a brushed silver um, for the smallest bead, but you really could use uh, shiny silver or gold or copper. And then the colors we chose for the rondels, we just chose this kind of ocean theme. But again, you can substitute any color story you want for this necklace and make it all crystal. You could make bridesmaids necklaces with pearls. Oh, that'd be really pretty. You could do reds or corals. Do I have one more in there? The sky's the limit. Oh, oh I see there's, there's an two extra over there. And this creates a pattern. You can see um, that it goes. It goes small, medium, small, big, small, medium, small, big. And this is the pattern that we'll follow when we put these beads on the bead stringing wire, which we'll do next. The first thing we need to do is cut our bead stringing wire. And this necklace will be about 18 inches when it's done. So we cut two strands that are longer than that. They're 26 inches long. And that's because we need a little extra room at the ends to put on our clasp. And the next thing we're gonna do is line up the ends and we've got a little trick for you. Use a piece of masking tape um, as a little cheap trick to keep the beads from sliding off the end. They make um, tools for this, like they make bead bugs and that sort of thing, and they're great, but you can always just use a piece of masking tape. Then we're gonna go to the other end to start beading. And the way this necklace works is two strands go in one bead, and then one of the strands goes in the next, and it alternates back and forth going in and out. So we always put two strands in the silver bead. And you can remember that as you go, that any time you pick up the silver bead, it gets both two strands. strands. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to split those two apart. And one strand goes in the medium bead. If I can find the hole in it. There that's, it is. That's always the hardest part. 
Okay. One strand goes in the medium bead, and then I have a silver bead here, so that means both strands. And the, what the silver beads are going to do is sort of pinch the beading wire together around the other beads. And it kind of holds the beads in place and creates this sort of floating effect. That's the magic. That's the magic floating part. And then because they're uh, farther apart like that, you don't need as many beads for this necklace. Like if this were uh, all strung with all beads next to each other, you'd probably use three or four times as many beads. But there's a lot of air in this because the beads are held apart by the wires. That means that you could actually use a more expensive beads. You could do this with all gemstones or semi-precious stones if you want, and it would mean that you're not using that many. It also means that the necklace goes together pretty fast because you're not putting on as many beads. That's nice if you're doing, um, you know, gifts, multiple gifts for people, bridesmaids gifts or Christmas holiday gifts, that sort of thing. You can kind of whip them out once you get going. It also means it's a really good craft for a party, like for a girls' night, because this it doesn't require any advanced skills, and you can do it in a short sitting, so you don't need a long attention span to get this one done. And actually, because the beads in this design are mixed, um, you could just put a bunch of beads and bowls out in the middle of the table and pour some wine or cocktails and yeah. everybody just sits around in beads and chats. And everybody's necklace will look different, I bet. And you can make this with the beads you already have, I'm sure. And if you just have bead stringing wire and you want to try it out and see what it looks like, just go ahead and cut two pieces and get out just whatever beads you have. Oh, did you see what I did? Oh, you missed that. I That's missed great. that one. I have That's to go to back. See. That wouldn't work at all. I have to put two strands into the silver one or it's not going to work. It's tricky. If you get going too there fast, go. you, might, you might miss it. Yeah. And it's also a good craft for kids because it doesn't require any skills and not much work with tools or anything like that. You could just do the ends for them. That's kind of the, the, the clasp. Only, yeah, the, the only tricky part is finishing the ends and putting yeah. on the clasp. And you could just do that for them. You could make a smaller version of this too, a little short version to make a bracelet. Oh, that'd be fun. And then you can also, you can make it with um, fishing line. We've seen it done with fishing line and that's kind of extra floaty. That's fun because the, the wire or the fishing line kind of completely disappears and it looks like the beads are just magically dancing around your neck, which is fun. And we get our beads at we go to a lot of craft stores, of course, and we love our local bead shops, but we love it when a bead show comes to town, and they come around about every couple months, there'll be a bead show at a local hotel, and they will take a conference room and spread out big tables, they're just loaded with beads. It's fun because you can get real specialty beads. You know, there'll be a table of all ceramic beads or lamp work beads. Yeah, someone will specialize in something yeah. or silver, beautiful hammered silver things. And you can buy them one at a time. You know, at, at the craft store, you can't necessarily pick out one bead that's extra special that you want. You have to buy a strand usually. Yes. So it's a nice way of getting sort of focal beads or specialty beads. And a lot of the beads come temporarily strung. So you'll be buying a strand of like 48 beads on one string. And what they mean for you to do is to cut apart that string, throw the string away, and then you restring them. So they're just selling them that way. It's just a way for them to transport and hold all those beads together. Now I'm just sliding the beads down. You can see I've really got a lot of them on there now. And I'm just going to slide them towards the end that has the masking tape so I can make more room at the front to put on the rest of my beads. You don't want to slide the beads all the way down to the, the complete end where the masking tape is. You want to leave a little bit of space, a little wiggle room, so that you can put the clasp on. It's definitely easier to put the clasp on when you have extra wire. Yeah, I've done that too many times and I haven't <laughs> given myself enough yes. uh, wire at the end to work with. So I've got a big bead and it gets one strand. And then next is the little silver bead and it always gets two strands. 
I love these, these silver beads are so pretty. They're really cute. The finish is nice. It sort of sets off the facets. I like oh, that. I put two strands in that one. Oh, I good pay, catch. I gotta pay attention. Good so catch. one strand goes in the bigger bead. These really are glass beads. You, if you, if you stepped on one, they would break. But we, we got these particular beads, um, the rondels at the flea market, actually. Oh yeah, we get a lot of beads at the flea market. It's funny, there'll just be one or two vendors um, at our at our favorite local flea market, um, and they always have rondels set out, you know, on, on big, long strands. It'll be like $3 or $4 for a big strand of beautiful glass rondels. It's crazy, and you can make deals with them, you know, if you, if you get more than four or something, you know, they drop the price. It's just a nice way of sort of getting, you know, a nice stock together. All right, this one's not going. I'm going to switch hands. <laughs> when in doubt, switch hands. That's right. So this is a medium bead, so it gets one strand. And then the small bead, bead gets two strands. And we haven't tried this with three strands, but that could be fun. I bet it would be a little wider and then a little bit more complicated. That would be pretty. Then you would want to keep track and make sure you were getting beads on each strand. Oh, that's a good point to make sure that it sort of creates that undulating you get look. a crisscross effect yeah. that way. We just have one more medium bead and then one more small bead, which gets both strands, as we know. If I can get them in there. That's so pretty. That's the hardest part is getting the two strands in the small one. And then I'm going to spread these out so they go farther down my wire so I get a little more room on that end. And you just slide them down. Don't slide them down too tight. You want them to have a little bit of air between them. That's yes. the look of this necklace. And the necklace is uh, meant to be 18 inches when it's done. So once you have all the beads kind of lined up where you think they should go, you'll want to get out your tape measure and spread them apart or push them together until they take up 18 inches. And then that'll tell you where you want to put on your clasp. So those are just about all spread out. Gosh, that's so pretty. The colors are just gorgeous together. All right. And once we have those spread out, we're ready to put on our ends. Now we're ready to finish the ends. And to do that, we're gonna take the two strands on one end, and we're gonna slide on this clamshell bead tip. And you can see it's got a little hole in the bottom and you want to slide up through the bottom into the clam part. I'm just going to slide that down. And next we're going to put on the crimp bead and we're going to slide both strands into the crimp bead. And you need to make sure that your crimp bead is um, tiny but big enough that both strands will fit through it. And then put the crimp bead where you want the necklace to end. So I'm looking at the spacing of the beads here and I think it should end here. And I'm going to use my chain nose pliers and I'm going to crimp or flatten the crimp bead. You can see it just flattens it right there and then that's going to hold the, um, the clamshell bead tip in place. I'm going to trim the wire off the other end of that and then slide the clamshell up over that crimp bead. You don't have to do this next step which is a, a drop of glue but it's just like a little insurance and good practice that so we wanted to show it to you. So I just put a little dab of glue inside the clamshell and then I'm going to use the chain nose pliers to close the clam over the crimp. And that'll just really act like, like Kitty said, like insurance, just to make sure that their end is never going to come off. So it's nice and tidy. And then it came with a little loop at the top. I'm going to close that loop because I want to put a jump ring on the end. And to open and close our jump ring, we're going to use two different pairs of pliers. That's why we had the second pair of round nose pliers. So I'm holding, I can see the cut in the jump ring is right here. And I'm going to hold one side flat with the, jump, the chain nose pliers. I'm going to hold the other side flat with the round nose pliers. And I'm going to open it like a door. And that keeps the shape, the round shape of the jump ring. I'm going to slide the loop onto my jump ring. And I'm going to close the jump ring the same way. I'm going to grab the end and I'm going to bend it back. And then I'll use the chain nose pliers just to flatten it. 
So I've, I haven't opened the jump ring like this. That would make it a bad shape. I've opened it like this. And that's a good practice just always. So that end's done. We'll go to the other end. And remember we had masking tape on the other end. So I'm just gonna cut the masking tape off that end and repeat the process that we did on the other side, which is the clamshell bead tip first, both strands up through the hole in the bottom. Slide that down and then the crimp bead, both strands through that. Whoops. Crimp beads are, are wonderful. They do a lot of hard work for us, especially when we're finishing the ends. It's so tiny. Okay, yeah. here, I've got the you other. You got one. There's the this other. This is the hardest part right here. It's, you know, it's <laughs> hard to see in those tiny little holes. Okay, and then put the crimp bead where you want the necklace to end. So this is our last bead, the silver one. This is about where we want the necklace to end. We used a tape measure and measured it. I'm going to crimp that or flatten that bead and trim the wire. There you go. And then put a little dab of glue inside our clamshell, which I'm just going to slide back up here. We love this bead stringing glue because it has a tiny applicator um, that so allows tiny, you to do... precision. Yeah, it's, it's really handy for doing this kind of tiny work. And then chain those pliers to close the clam over the crimp, nice and tidy. And I'm going to close this loop. And then one more jump ring. So we use the other pair of pliers for that. Thank you. And, whoops, where'd that go? Again, we're going to open this like we would open a door or a gate. And this is the jump ring that's going to hold our lobster clasp on. The other end, we just have the jump ring, and that's um, what the lobster clasp is going to feed it into and, and hold the necklace together. I'm going to grab it down here. There we go. There you go. So the lobster clasp goes on the jump ring. The jump ring goes on the loop. And then I'm going to close these again. Whoops, stay on there. This part's tricky, like we said. It's tiny work. Get that on there, there you go. And then I'm just gonna use the end of this to close it like a door. Perfect. And then I'm just gonna double check that it's flat with the chain nose pliers. And now we have our clasp on our finished necklace. Beautiful. Here's our finished necklace. I love this bead combination and they really do look like they're floating. And you can make this one a lot of different ways. I'm wearing one that's all the same color. And mine is rainbow colors, but it's all tiny beads. And so now you can make your own floating bead necklace. And just have fun with it.